Hey, hey, it's your pal Terry Bain coming at you with another fun episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're going to talk to Justin and Zachary, and they're going to share how their business helps other marketing agencies and other businesses stay in touch with their leads. But before we get into them, I've got to say hello to my good friend, longtime pal, the lovely, the talented, the one, the only, the Facebook marketing queen herself, Janet E. Johnson. What's going on, Janet E. Johnson? How are you? Oh, good. Doing good. Just staying in. Staying in. <laughs> staying in. Nothing different, though, but I've always stayed in. <laughs> I think, yeah, this isn't that much of a change for you or I, right? Working at home is working at home. So, hey, thank God everybody's catching on to how cool it is. Uh, exactly. exactly. Ebola. We're going with straight up Ebola today for the E because <laughs> oh. I feel like we're kind of in a disease kind of place anyway. So why the hell not just embrace it? Oh, there's another E word. You're just having yeah, an so, E kick at this point. Okay. <laughs> everything's E, Janet E. Johnson. Everything is E. So, you know Justin. Justin brought in his partner and co-founder, Zachary. So, I'm going to let you introduce Justin. We're going to have Justin introduce Zachary, and then we're going to let this show create whatever magic it creates. Sound good? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Well, welcome, Justin and Zach. I um, just wanted to bring up that, yeah. How this happened is through the Facebook group. So Justin was interviewed by Jeff Miller in the, the butt group. We call it the butt group. That's all, all I remember it, but it's, it's called Agency Scaling Secrets. Quit working your butt off. And then he has a big picture of a butt on it. So I want to give a shout out to Jeff Miller for that's how we met in the first place. And um, he has a big group. He's got quite a, quite a good group. So when you were interviewed... I commented that I wanted to see this product because you were talking about it. And then I somehow won also. So it was like a double thing. Like he gives away the five people. And so then I ended up winning, but we already had an appointment set up. So it was just kind of funny. And then when we got chatting, I said, this is a product that our audience could, you know, listen to and hear about because you never know who's out there that is doing Facebook ads. There's a lot of people doing Facebook ads. So let's talk about your product because I thought it was pretty cool because I do a ton with lead, lead generation with Facebook ads. So welcome, Justin and Zach. Hey, yeah, thank you, Janet. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having us, Terry. Uh, How, yeah, how'd you two meet, Justin and Zach? So we uh, got in, into a circle of uh, kind of like a, a coach and um, we... <laughs> Funny story, actually, we were we were being taught on how to do like cold email and, and prospecting and reaching out. Um, my background's in healthcare, and I guess I'm somehow on one of these um, like lead generation lists um, for uh, a certain industry. And Zach downloaded that list and actually sent me an email, um, an email that we kind of are both you know using to to go after and trying to get clients. And I got it, and I booked a time with him, and then we. <laughs> I had no call. I didn't let him. (laughs) He had no idea. Oh, I get it. I booked a call with him and I didn't let him go through the whole demo, but uh, I was like, Hey dude, it's Justin from, uh, you know, the Facebook group. He's like, what? This is crazy. How'd you get on my link? (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Was his email better than yours? What's that? Was his email better than the one you were sending or was it, you know, was it almost a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It worked, right? You were like, I got to talk about that. (laughs) <laughs> um, he's modest. <laughs> no, and then we just stayed in touch and, um, really, so we both own marketing companies, lead generation, uh, like for local businesses and we just stayed in touch and, uh, we were kind of noticing very, very similar. Uh, we were in very, very similar situations. Like we had the prospecting down, so we were getting a lot of clients. Um, and we were just kind of like in this cycle of getting a lot of clients and then also losing them after like maybe one or two months. We knew we had a good system where it come to found out was like, whenever we generate the leads, we would send them to uh, the business owner, the business owner staff, and they just weren't following up the leads properly. Some people were really good at it. Those were the, those are the people that we would keep around for like four five, six, you know, sometimes even a year. Uh, because the overall campaign was working because they were doing their part was following up with the leads. Some of them, not so much. So what they would do is, you know, they would not call the lead at least for a couple of days. Once it came through, they would only call them once and leave a voicemail. And we just kind of got tired of losing clients. So um, Zach actually brought up the idea to me and I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> and then like a couple of days later, I called him 
I was like, dude, let's do it. This is, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. This is a no brainer. So we developed it uh, for our agencies. And then now what we're doing is we're white labeling uh, conversionally to other marketing agencies. Essentially what we've created is a ISA team, internal sales agent team. So whenever the lead is generated, what happens is we follow up with the lead and then we usually qualify them and book an appointment on our client's calendar. Got it. Got it. And they, and you do, the cool thing is you are speedy about it because I know for a fact, like I work with a mortgage and mm-hmm. it's something like less than 15 minutes, the, the lead's gone. Yep. And yeah. That's the problem that we see is they're, they're like, oh, I'll get to them in like within the next 24 hours or something like that. And then it's mm-hmm. too late. So there's a couple of stats uh, from, so like my background is in healthcare, everything that health, like in healthcare is all evidence-based practice, right? So what me and Zach did when we started this whole thing, we were like, hey, we want to make sure that we do our research. I'm sure there's research out there on the best practices of responding to a lead. So we did our research and we looked at a bunch of different articles because we like Zach and I together, we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, there's a best practice behind it. Right. And, and so we looked at a couple of articles, one article that was published in Harvard business review looked at, I think three years worth of data, 15,000 uh, call attempts and like over a hundred thousand leads. Right. Um, so the first thing was like, if you don't follow up with a lead within five minutes, under five minutes, if you don't do that, the chances of you qualifying that lead de- like decrease by 400%. Wow, crazy. Yeah, so a big number. Like our goal, yeah, exactly. We were, we were like, is that a misprint? And no, we looked at the data. <laughs> is that even a number? <laughs> Hold on a second. How does that work? Yeah, no, that was actually right. So what we did was like, that's our, that's our number one objective, our number one goal of our conversion leads, call them immediately within five minutes. I think our average call time, Zach, do you know that? It's four minutes, 28 seconds. Wow. Yeah. So wow. that's exactly. Do you guys do exactly it like in the middle of the night too? Or do you have certain times that you Yeah, do it's 24 seven. So Interesting. essentially what we defined as our parameters is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the time zone of the company. And then if it falls outside of that range, we have people working overnight that'll text the leads. And then if the leads want a call or we'll prompt them to see if they want to, you know, communicate over text or over the phone. And if they want to get on the phone, we'll jump on a phone call with them at 3 a.m. Wow. That's awesome. And is your, like, obviously you're partnered with a call center. Did you build your own? We built our own. So you have your own contact center. Is it here or is it just disparate throughout the nation, the world? Where, it's all where over the world. So we yeah. have call reps from Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, the Philippines. Uh, and even Justin and I, if we have to, we'll jump on calls. Um, so it's pretty much all over. Our objective is to be able to have Spanish, you know, bilingual leads and also good English uh, agents to handle those type of leads. It's a cool, that's a cool spot. And how'd you, how'd you pick those locations? How do you, how do you go source people to work in a virtual contact center in multiple countries how you, yeah. That yeah. So we have, we have a couple of people that we work with some recruiters in those areas. And what we do is they give us, you know, whenever we need um, a, a new agent, they give us um, a, a list of people. We kind of have them, we give them a script, they kind of go through and read it. And then we, you know, we select like which ones we think um, that would be a good fit for us. And then me and Zach, we both interview them. Mm-hmm. So about out about of like uh, every 30 people, only about two, are able to come work at conversionally because we're very strict on one. You need to ha- make sure that you can have a good conversation. Now we're talking about agents that are, you know, in Philippines or Venezuela, right? So we don't, we want to make sure that the language barrier doesn't affect the lead conversion rate, mm-hmm. right? That's our number one goal. So um, most of these agents have worked in places like Amazon or AT&T and have uh, really, really good training. And they're very, very like their English is, it would be just like, if you are at a medical office and you can tell that that person uh, just can speak another language, right? The, the, the accent is not really that bad. And then they can actually have a, a back and forth conversation and take the conversation anywhere that it needs to go. Do either of you speak Spanish or you just assume that they're good at it because where they're from? No, <laughs> my wife <laughs> does. So I had my wife kind of pick up on some things uh, in our one. So to streamline interview processes, everything with businesses about systems. 
one of the things that Justin and I developed when people interview before we even get them on a face to face interview like this, we have them send us a video script of them introducing themselves and then reading a script. If they're bilingual, they read it in another language. So then we'll have people interpret it and Hey, did they hit the notes on this kind of thing? That way we're not wasting our time. Very smart, man. That's you guys. That's a clever design you guys have. I love it. Sorry. I'm way off in the weeds probably because I'm like interviewing people from different countries right now, but it's (laughs) curious. Very, very cool. It worked out for us. I mean, really when all this came to fruition, we had recently started developing relationships with people that could help us source this talent so we could employ the right people for this uh for conversionly and it just the dominoes lined up um and it worked out in our favor that's how you know you're doing the right thing when the dominoes line up all right janity johnson tell us what uh what was really intriguing to you and and why this is going on the biggest thing i think is well a your cost so we'll talk about your the pricing of it is not like crazy or anything like i mean it's very very cost effective for for a lead especially when you look at you know i mean right now i'm i know with the mortgage company we're converting at about ten dollars or less so you add a little bit of money onto that and you could talk about that it's not a big deal you know to up the 400 percent that you just talked about up the you know the potential of that sale if they're not getting back with them so talk about that side of things also and how that works you talk about price Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are two fees associated working with Conversionly. The first fee is a one-time setup fee. That fee covers creating your account, uh, creating your scripts, and training our agents on that script. Now, again, it's a one-time setup fee per client. So if you had five clients, you would uh, be charged a one-time setup fee for each of of those clients. The one-time setup fee is $149 currently. And again, that's a one-time setup fee per client. Uh, The second fee associated to working with us is we're going to charge you a flat rate fee per lead that you send us that we try to book. So you send us a lead and we try to book them on your calendar. We're going to charge you a flat rate fee for all the work that we do. That flat rate fee is normally $7 a lead. However, for the first 100 agencies, uh, we're going to give them and lock them in at $5 a lead for life. So they're going to be grandfathered in. If they bring on a client in the next year or in two years, you're going to be grandfathered in at that $5 a lead cost. Uh, and we're pretty close to a uh, hundred agencies. So that might not be. So I better get for, signed up. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually, Don't I actually wait. just checked the other day. I believe we're at 87. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. okay. Wow. Wow. I mean, five, even $7 isn't like, you know, it, it, it really depends on the business, but that's nothing. I mean, in the realm scheme of things. Absolutely. For- if you think about it, like not only for a business to hire this into their own business, not only do you have to look at the wage that you're going to pay somebody to do oh. that, two, to have somebody work 24 seven, that's three shifts, three, eight hour shifts. So you technically need three employees. And furthermore, then you have to go through the training. So that's really where the cost effectiveness comes into yeah. play as well. You know, this is a service I know I need. This is what it costs. Here's what it would cost for me to develop it myself. It's a no brainer. Really. Do you co-create the training with them or how does that process work? It's, it's a combination of both, right? So we take our experience and everything we've seen with scripts, you know, different types of qualifying questions and how they're asked the progression of the call. Um, and then pair that with their experience. Tell us, you know, everything granular about not only your industry, but the company itself. And let's customize this to, your specific use case. And then we have like our agents will go out, say it's an industry that we've never worked in before. Our agents will go and start researching YouTube videos, the benefits of solar, right? Uh, How solar panels are installed. What's the connection? That way when they get those oddball questions from a lead, they're Johnny on the spot and able to answer those questions. Are you doing all these, are most of this generated through lead ads or do you do both from, you know, I know you connect through Zapier because we talked about that, but, and I know that some people might not understand this talk, but is that the, is that the main thing, lead ads, or do you do it to landing pages too, or how? So it's a mix. as long as it can connect to Zapier and it gets sent over to our CRM, 
Um, essentially, it could be a mini chat bot or it could be a um, click funnels page. It could be a landing page. It could be a lead ad. Um, it just really depends. A lot of, I think what we see a lot are um, the lead ads and then mm -hmm. the landing page going to an opt in. Makes sense. Yep. Makes yeah, sense. you'll see with, with like real estate um, and solar, those are more geared towards like conversion campaigns in Facebook specifically, uh, where they send them to a landing page, they answer some survey questions themselves, and they come to us. Just because I, I think most people are well aware now, when it gets into real estate, if you just do a lead form, um, it, that's someone who's not looking to buy a house. They're just interested um, in the real estate market right now and want to see houses. So um, we found that the real estate partners that we work with, mortgage, things like that, the ones that send them in conversion campaigns to landing pages have a little bit more resistance or friction in that opt-in has a much higher conversion rate, comparatively speaking. For sure. Yeah, I'm, so real estate, mortgage, I assume insurance, obviously a little bit of healthcare. What, uh, really? what other industries do you hop into? So really any, yeah. We, yeah, go ahead, so Jack, you can list them all. We work with all industries, pretty much any industry you can use, we'll, I mean, we'll adapt to. The majority of our clients, are made up of solar companies, dental, medical spas, chiropractors, stem cell clinics, uh, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and we're just getting started with some uh, service, home service companies as well. Do you, marketing companies. Yeah, yeah marketing. I was going to say marketing, yeah, or co coaches, consultants, I suppose, to, to book yep. their, their appointments could be. Really? You can, uh, can work in any industry. <laughs> we can work in any industry. All we need is just a... Like we need to have a conversation with you on what exactly your service or your offer is for the ad. Um, a handful of qualifying questions that we develop with you and then frequently asked questions and what, like what the industry is and the objective. And then we just need your calendar link and we're ready to go. So really just, you know, questions, FAQs, calendar link, and you know, we could qualify mostly any lead. And you're as interested in finding end users as marketing agencies, or are you really just focused on the agency side? Primarily so the we, agency. Yeah. So we could do both. However, our, our idea is if you can get an agency, get they have clients. multiple clients. So it becomes that, um, like that wheel, right? So there's an X factor, no doubt. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, I love it. I'm really, I'm glad that we're having that. I, I'm thinking of like a handful of people I will send this to just because <laughs> they Perfect. should probably know you guys. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so if they want to get a hold of you and set up a demo, I think a demo and just explaining this in, in detail, and I think you did a great job explaining it and people should understand, but you know, it's sure. always good to demo sometimes too. So wh where do they reach you? Yep. They can go to conversionly.io and on that page, it'll explain a little bit more about our service. And then uh, there are a couple of spots on there where you can book a demo with us. And that's conversion Lee L Y. So conversion yeah, Lee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like the word conversion L Y dot I O. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and then where, where, if they want to reach out to you guys have questions, where's the best place to reach you? Both I'm luckless you. Zach everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, just luckless Zach. How'd you pick that as a name? I, I, I was it, it, with the four leaf clover. I was like, that's, yeah, a, that's so, an interesting story. What's up? Everything, so pretty much growing up, you know, I grew up in a very poor family, uh, a terrible spot in the country. And I guess I've adapted to the mindset that we create our own luck. We are the creator of our destiny. Um, and luckless just really fit my persona, who I am, um, my beliefs and everything. And that's carried into my marketing agency, uh, Luckless Digital, and then everything. Zach Williams is a very common name. You, <laughs> there's Those Janet famous, Johnson. <laughs> yeah, famous, uh, famous actors, uh, country music stars like Zach Williams. So uh, to make True. my handle separate, I just used our company branding, Luckless Zach. 
That's interesting. Does that stop people? Like, I, I'd be like, well, I don't really want to work with anybody who don't have any blood. <laughs> <laughs> I get that question all the time. Honestly, it's the perfect icebreaker. People yeah, always yeah, look at me perfect. like, what is luckless? Wouldn't you want to be lucky? And I'm like, well, let me ask you this. Does your business succeed on luck? No. no. You know, it takes hard work and perseverance. You're creating your own luck. And that's exactly what, you know, I fit, our agency fits is helping businesses create their own luck. That's awesome. Very All right. Good. So, so for, for fans that aren't, uh, for Ernie, who's not actually watching and just listening, um, I'm looking at and behind both of them are very similar looking acoustic Oh, yeah, stars. that's true. <laughs> so I'm wondering if you two have ever done a little jam session together. And uh, that's funny. One's that's funny in Raleigh and one's in Jacksonville, Florida. So they don't, they're, they're as virtual as Janet and I are. So. Justin, exactly. do you want to comment on that? Oh, he, yeah, okay. Uh, we got team meetings every uh, Thursday and Monday. Um, and one of the meetings I was waiting on Zach and I had my guitar out. I, I probably know like two or three chords. And so I played like probably the best one that I know. Um, and it was only like for five seconds. I was like, yeah, I'm going to stop there. So it makes it seem like I can actually play the guitar. And then Zach whips out his guitar and he's like, <laughs> and I'm like okay, well, let's show off in front of everybody. <laughs> oh, whatever. You called me out. And then he started writing this song about he's better than me. You know, then it was a dueling, like, like, a oh, no. So, oh, Terry yeah. just started something. That's but, funny. Uh, that's <laughs> so what I we do. did was we were creating training videos for our agents on different industries. And at the beginning, or actually during the whole training, I just had the guitar. And at the beginning, I was like, all right, guys, we're going to teach you a little bit about the solar industry. But first, I got a little song that I wrote about Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Just to kind of make it fun, you know, spice it up a little bit. And then he he pretty much, like, I'm pretty sure he called up Brad Paisley, and they both wrote a country song together about <laughs> how I can't play the guitar. And all oh, that's good. Yeah. Good fun. Uh, well, that's interesting. Well, it sounds like you two have a great uh, partnership with this this business. So that's awesome. We enjoy awesome. the dynamic for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Zach's yeah. Uh, luckless Zach, I guess everywhere, and then I'm Justin Oglesby on Facebook, and then Just Oglesby on Instagram. Oh. And then I think okay, I'm Justin cool. Oglesby everywhere else. I got a YouTube channel. Um, my TikTok's getting pretty uh, popular right now. We yeah. were just told to delete that. I don't know. I, I, you, haven't you seen that whole thing going around? They're saying don't keep yeah. it. I don't know, but. What uh, what kind of content are you creating on TikTok? I'm always curious. Uh, so with COVID-19 and the pandemic, um, my wife, uh, she is kind of out of work. So it was kind of started as a thing that me and her would do together. And then uh, there were a couple of videos that I just created that became pretty popular. And it's just it, like, if you know TikTok, you, you just find like different audio files and you just do s stupid things or funny things. Uh, to those audio files you'll see I my cats on it that's all i do is my cats on it i'm like just cats <laughs> he's a better he's a better tiktoker than a guitar player is that what i'm hearing zachary yeah he's got <laughs> he's got one that went i'm surprised it didn't go viral uh had like a hundred shares just from his facebook page had like a hundred shares like almost a thousand comments and likes and he's sitting there it's like two neighbors arguing and he's sitting there like doing weird stuff in front of his yard like he's eavesdropping on the argument it was hilarious <laughs> i lost it <laughs> that's good that's well, that was on my facebook we'll put, we'll put that in the in the show notes so make sure we get a copy of that so we yeah. can drop it so people can see okay. it okay yeah yep yep joanne will take care of that so awesome well thanks again and once again let's fi finish up the show with where to find you guys just so that if anybody missed it where, where's the best place to learn about the follow-up lead generation it's a follow-up source when you're running your facebook and instagram ads conversionly.io yep. awesome that's our website awesome. um it'll explain everything and there are a couple of uh, buttons on there to book a time Perfect. Perfect. And then you can find all our past episodes at businessgrowthtime.com slash podcasts. And we have a hundred, this is show 148, I believe. And lots and lots of great interviews and content there. We also have our Facebook group, which is businessgrowthtime.xyz. We'll take you directly to the Facebook group. So thank you guys. We appreciate you guys being on. Absolutely. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Be well. 
It'd help if I could find the button.